Hello, Gem Hunter. Did you know that it's possible to figure out what kinds of gems might be hiding in your backyard just by observing the minerals in the soil? In fact, many gems are discovered this way. Some of the world's most successful prospectors use this very technique, analyzing the soil to determine what types of gemstones might be found in a particular area. To help you do the same, in today's video, you'll learn about the most important mineral indicators for gemstones. So pay close attention because you're about to gain access to exclusive information packed with details that will forever change the way you see the world around you. From now on, every nature walk will be a new opportunity to discover potential gemstone deposits hidden underground. To make things easier, it's important to follow a few key steps to ensure your prospecting success. The first thing you need to know is which gems are most commonly found and which of them have significant commercial value. The truth is that most of the more easily found gemstones have a lower commercial value, while the rarer stones tend to have a much higher value. These include diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires, tourmalines, aquamarines, and even the extremely rare painted. However, there are also intermediate gems such as garnet, topaz, certain varieties of quartz like amethyst, and noble opal. These may not be as rare, but they still have interesting commercial value. In addition, many other gemstones, which we won't cover in this video, can be discovered using the same mineral indicators you'll learn about today. So if you find something unusual and aren't sure what it is, don't forget to check out our ebook on gemstones, which is available through the first link in the description. But as mentioned, most other gemstones sold on the market tend to have lower value, but they're still worth exploring. To keep things simple, let's focus on the most important gemstones for now. We can talk about others in future videos, as there are plenty of videos on this channel covering each of these stones in detail, including how to identify them and where to find them in nature. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and the algorithm will take care of recommending those videos for you. Now that you're familiar with some of the most valuable gemstones, the next step is to analyze the soil. For that, it's important to understand that you shouldn't just look at a plot of land from a distance or collect a few indicator minerals and assume you know what gemstones might be there. That approach would be far too imprecise. The best method is to closely observe the minerals present in the soil to identify which ones might be indicators of valuable gemstones. This will help you estimate the potential of your area. A very practical tip is to use a notebook to write down all the minerals you find in your region so you can analyze them more thoroughly at home. If possible, keep physical samples for a more precise identification of the minerals. Keep in mind that finding a single indicator mineral doesn't guarantee the presence of gemstones in the area. Ideally, you want to find multiple indicators in the same region, but even a single indicator can significantly increase the chances that you're on the right track. One of the most important minerals to watch for when searching for gemstones in your area is mica. This mineral is relatively common and very easy to identify. It appears in the form of small, thin plates that easily peel off and reflect sunlight, creating a distinctive shine that makes it simple to recognize. Depending on the angle, it might even look like tiny plastic sheets or fish scales with a metallic or pearly appearance. The presence of mica can be one of the main indicators for several gemstones, including tourmaline, aquamarine, emerald, garnet, ruby, and sapphire. However, it's important to remember that mica alone doesn't guarantee the presence of these gemstones, but it is certainly a point worth paying attention to during your soil analysis. Another very important indicator mineral you should know is phlogopite. It's crucial to pay attention to this material because it closely resembles mica, but has subtle differences that make all the difference. Phlogopite comes in a variety of colors, ranging from yellowish and greenish to brownish, or, in some cases, even slightly reddish. Since it belongs to the same family as mica, it shares similar characteristics, such as its thin, flaky structure, but its distinct coloration sets it apart. The significance of identifying phlogopite lies in the fact that its presence can indicate the existence of diamonds in the area. For this reason, it's essential to learn how to recognize this mineral during your soil analyses. While finding phlogopite alone isn't a guarantee, it is an excellent starting point to guide your search for high-value gemstones. Now, when it comes to rocks, one of the most important elements to look for when searching for gemstones is pegmatite. 
This rock is extremely significant because many types of valuable gemstones form within it. Pegmatite is an excellent indicator of the possible presence of stones like tourmaline, aquamarine, emerald, and, in some cases, garnet and topaz. Visually, pegmatite looks quite similar to granite, the material often used for kitchen countertops. The difference lies in the grain size. While granite has small, uniform grains, pegmatite features much larger grains, sometimes up to about 3 centimeters in size. This characteristic is easy to identify when observing the rock closely. Another important distinction is that pegmatite contains a mix of various minerals, particularly quartz, mica, and feldspar. You can find pegmatite in slopes, ravines, or small hills, and in many cases, it extends over large areas, increasing your chances of finding gemstones. If you notice a significant amount of mica within the pegmatite, that's an excellent sign, as its presence further strengthens the likelihood of gemstone formation in the area. In addition to pegmatite, another key element to look out for is schist and mica schist. These rocks are quite distinctive and easy to identify. Schist, for example, has a dark color with a metallic or silvery sheen at times. It's a rock that typically crumbles and breaks apart easily. What makes it particularly significant is that, although it's one of the most common impurities in emeralds, it's also associated with the formation of tourmalines and aquamarines. So finding schist or make a schist is a good indication that the area deserves a closer examination. Another useful tip is to look for granite in the area. While granite by itself isn't enough to suggest the presence of gemstones, its combination with other minerals, like schist, can be a promising sign. In areas with granite, you might come across topaz, rubies, or garnets. And when it comes to garnets, they can be an additional clue that diamonds could also be present in the region. It's important to keep in mind that just observing the soil or the minerals on the surface isn't usually enough. You'll need to roll up your sleeves, collect samples, and carefully analyze them. This also applies to gemstones found in rivers. You can't simply glance at the water and instantly know what minerals are there. You'll need to gather gravel, sift through it, and take a closer look. In rivers, you can find various types of gemstones such as quartz, topaz, garnet, ruby, sapphire, and even diamonds. One specific mineral that deserves your attention is ilmenite. This mineral, a natural iron oxide composed of iron and titanium, has a dark metallic appearance and resembles small pieces of iron. Because of its weight, ilmenite is often referred to as iron scrap by prospectors. The presence of ilmenite in volcanic rocks can be a strong indicator of diamonds, especially when it is associated with minerals like phlogopite or garnet. This significantly increases the likelihood of discovering these valuable gems. In rivers, ilmenite is also a promising sign since it frequently appears in alluvial deposits, which are concentrations of gravel found in riverbeds. These deposits form because heavier stones like diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and garnets tend to settle while the river's flow carries away lighter minerals, such as those in the quartz family. Therefore, finding ilmenite in river gravel is an excellent indicator that the area may contain garnets, rubies, sapphires, and even diamonds. Returning to the topic of rivers, topaz and smoky quartz are also stones that can be found in riverbeds. However, in these cases, there are not many clear indicators so you will need to dive into the river and actively search for the stones. It is also worth noting that some gemstones are rarely found in rivers, such as aquamarine, tourmaline, emerald, and opal. If they do appear, they are likely to be of very poor quality. But after all this, let's imagine you've collected a bunch of cool little stones in all sorts of sizes, colors, and shapes. How are you going to identify them? Well, if you don't know much about gemstones, you can seek help from a gemologist, jeweler, or an experienced prospector. These professionals often have the knowledge needed to help you with the identification process. But if you don't know any of these professionals and don't know where to start, our digital book, Gemology Journey for Beginners, can teach you everything you need to know about gemstones. It includes simple, home-based methods for identifying them and even a mineral dictionary, which is essentially a comprehensive list of gemstones from around the world with their unique characteristics explained in detail. This digital book was specially designed for beginners, allowing you to learn everything about diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and other gemstones. With just a few clicks, you can access it through the first link in the description of this video. By doing so, you'll not only gain valuable knowledge, but also support the continuation of this project, 
which has helped thousands of people on their gemology journey for free. Additionally, in the video now appearing on your screen, you can learn more about other minerals like diamonds and tourmalines. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Good luck, Gem Hunter.